It's been a bit since I've uh, done any reviews for this series for Ayashimon, and I think one of the reasons why I, I, I got behind and I just kind of put it off, and I think one of the reasons is there wasn't there wasn't really anything that I wanted to talk about too much over the last couple chapters. And not that it, like there, there was stuff that I didn't like, more that there just wasn't anything that got me too excited about what was going on. And I thought this chapter was a pretty solid one. Nothing like outrageous, like beyond what I would have expected. But one that did go away that I, I I think made a lot of sense. Something that I think a lot of people uh, expected to happen if put in the situation. Uh, for this dude, for Maru, what was it? Maru Kaido. I, I, I'm trying to get him in the uh, Doran Doran main character's names uh, memorized. Uh, but he he goes to fight this dude and... I thought it was it was really weird he was going and fighting people like this guy as early as he was, but it seems like this guy isn't the top of his group. He's just more like the face of it, which is fine with me. But because I was like, it, it'd be weird to kind of like get him way high up really fast unless this is just the first portion. Like, if there's going to be gangs outside of Japan that they're going to fight or something, and, and monsters from all over the world. If the, if, like, the series did that. Obviously, we don't know how long it's going to go. Uh, the first ranking actually did pretty well, from what I understand. I think it got, like, 7th in its first officially ranked week. But, uh, you have the main character. The main character as well, like, one of the things about him... He doesn't have any powers at the moment. He's just very physically strong and durable. His powers are very basic and easy to understand. But he has obviously like a high level. It's kind of like Saitama, but not to the same extent. It's just in the in the concept of how it works. Like he is he is just somebody who is way physically more like uh, trained than a majority of the people that you would expect for, you know, for him, just a, a guy. But when you look at all of that and you, you like, see what exactly he, like, he's done so far, is he's pretty much just punched people very, very, uh, basically. I think eventually he's going to get his own power, but this, is, this chapter shows, obviously, that he's not, like, he's obviously not anywhere as strong as he's going to need to be, when it comes to larger threats in the series. And I think that just makes sense. Because like, if his whole thing is if he was a shonen main character. And, and hit the concept of what he wants to do. He can't just one shot everybody. and like Or like topple over all his opponents. He has to get people that challenge him and push him. to get admit That force him to get stronger. Like that's obviously just one of the staples in the, like, in the, in the whole genre. So... He would would want this to happen. He would be excited if he ran into an opponent that was pretty much like you know you know pushing him and making it so he's got to uh, pretty much figure out a way to overcome like his limit his current limitations, figure out a strategy and how to beat his opponent. When when it comes down to like a you know uh, a good guy versus a uh, you know an evil bad guy boss opponent kind of match. But, like, this guy is just kind of wrecking him pretty easily at the very start. And he's, he looks like he's using his powers pretty intelligently. He reminds me of, um, like, there's a couple characters that, that do both, like, kind of heat and cold at the same time in, in various ways. Uh, I remember there's a, one of Medica's uh, siblings, the sister, can do that in Medica Box. But um, he, he makes, like, these flames that go around the floor and... It's not that he got burned. It's that, like this. This guy pretty much absorbed his body heat and made him, uh, you know, his whole body just cold. And this is cool because this is something that I always wondered, like, if it was a power for like a fire character. Because obviously, if you get just really cold, if somebody, like, imagine the same thing as like, you know, we've seen people rip water out of people's bodies or blood or something. But I've always wondered, like, what if you just ripped heat out of them? Because I'm sure everybody can imagine, like, just a time where they were so cold they just didn't really want to move and their body was just like so cold like they just couldn't really do much and i was like well if you could just do that to somebody that'd be a really like actually a pretty dangerous ability and seeing it actually here was was pretty neat it it makes me hope that this bad guy even though he's probably just gonna be like the first boss of the series 
I, I kind of hope maybe he'll at least be somebody that sticks around in the long run. Maybe he'll be one of those characters that even though he's beaten early, he's beaten early so he could be a reoccurring uh, ally to the main character. Who knows? Uh, probably not. I would imagine this guy's probably not going to. Um, the fact that the main character has, though not killed, because we know that the yokai, or is it yokai in the series? Yeah, yeah, it's yokai. Um, when they, you know, quote unquote die, it's their physical body dies. And they'll eventually be able to form a new body. It'll just be like in a hundred years. So for for the main character who's pretty much been doing that to these yokai up until now, it'd be like, like the fate of this guy is going to be either like as soon as this fight is over is either going to be he's still up and we'll see him again or body turns back into money. Like there, there's really only two outcomes, I think, right now for a character like this. Because it's not like he's an opponent later on in the series where we don't know. This is the first... Th this seems to be the first boss opponent for the main character. So this guy could easily be a one-off, never-seen-again character. We have no idea. It's just gonna... You know, it's just one of those things we have to, to kind of stand by and wait to see what exactly is going to happen. But it is cool that he's he essentially uses heat to do ice, which is really uh, badass when he like makes this big ice club on his arm. And just like smashes it right into Morrow. And Morrow's still doing stuff. Like he's still attempting. But clearly like he can't really fight this guy. Because he even goes for a hit. And the guy just like messes with part of his body. So he's like part made of smoke or something. Or like mist. So like, he's got a degree of intangibility. I don't really know how Morrow can beat this guy at all. And there was a whole thing going into this fight. Where the guy said it wasn't going to be one of these ritual battles. So I think logically this is like the main character because it's also not set up in like this whole ceremonial ritual with rules and outcomes that you have to abide by a match that the main character can lose here and it's not going and it's free of any of those like built in story uh, ramifications if they lose one of these matches. They're not in one of these matches so he can lose and it won't be a big deal other than just him as a character losing a fight. Uh, and I think that he's going to lose for sure at this point now because like he he doesn't have anything he can really do. And I know that he's hyped up that this is an opponent he can fight, but it's like this, if this guy can turn intangible and Morrow's only power right now is punching. He can't do anything because like unless he does some science thing, unless he does something that kind of like is like a, a, a way around this guy's ability to turn intangible, like maybe he somehow messes with the sprinklers and the water interferes with this guy's ability to turn into his mist because of something. Like it, like if there's something in there that he does through an outside force, I can see. But from his powers right now, he's just he's just a meathead. There's nothing else to him at the moment. Uh, Rara tries to like take out like a weapon. She doesn't. Uh, she doesn't end up getting it fully off. He figures out who he is, though, because he sees the blade, which I thought was really interesting and why she didn't do it like more into uh, un like covered up because obviously now he knows who she is. So this this is another thing, though, that tells me like there, there has to be something important following these events because like the main character has to have some form of outcome that I think is satisfying for both sides, for the bad guy and the good guy. Uh, and now they have somebody who knows the important secret to the female lead of the series so it's like well how's that going to be handled and how is it going to be for uh, you know following this next part because he just says to shoot her at one point he's like happy to see uh see her or something and he just has this moment where he walks away maybe he liked her father and he was happy to see her but he knows that he has to have her killed or something but he's like he's like saying stuff that like he abandoned her but it's like well I don't think that the teardrop really, like, what was the point of the teardrop if it's like, oh, it's, it's, you know, he, he wants her gone and he's on to get away from her. And, like, unless, unless, like, he, like, her dad actually hated her or something and she was, like, a big problem and he's looking at it as, like, this chance to, to do him a favor or, or something like that. I don't really know how that's gonna, to, to go down for his character and like why he you know why he was crying because that has to be something important to like his reaction to both like initially and then obviously like shedding a tear has to give something like gives indication of something important to his backstory and i'm guessing it involves uh her dad 
So he must have known her and probably it was probably one of those things where he had a lot of respect for him or something. And he was like a mentor, somebody looked up to. I don't know. Uh, but Maru at the very end is just getting real hype because obviously he's happy that this is actually a good fight. He's getting pushed and he wants to continue this, though. I don't think that he can do anything to this guy through his normal means. Again, if he does something that like involves an outside source interfering or helping or aiding him, like again, if the like sprinklers on and maybe the water, he doesn't want to get like his mist dispersed because then he'll get like washed away in the water and it's harder to reform or something like there could be some easy way that it's difficult for him to do it if something happens that messes with his um that messes with how his ability works but other than that though it was it was a solid chapter pretty good nothing crazy i i like where it's going the only thing i would say is i want to know the main character's path after this and i think this is a good uh spot for the chapter because i have an idea of like what what I want to happen in the series, something I want to happen to look forward to. And I like the series so far, but there hasn't been anything other than like the female lead's goal of, you know, avenging her dad. But it's like, that's gonna, that's a long goal. Whereas like something that we have right now, it's like, okay, well, he now has an opponent that is stronger than him. He's gonna figure, have to try and figure out how to fight somebody like that in the future. And it's like, well, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna learn an ability? Is he gonna gain uh, an extra technique is he gonna unlock his main character power who knows uh other than that though comment below thumbs up the video but friend like button subscribe and check out my other videos but other than that appreciate when you start subscribing thank you all for listening bye